Standardized anomalies allow us to see how far off the ensemble mean or members are relative to a historical climatology such as the climate forecast system reanalysis. These graphs are produced by looking at the forecast variable minus a climatological mean and that value divided by the climatological standard deviation. For our use, we take the running three-week CFSR distribution and find the mean for that distribution. Next, we calculate the standard deviation for this distribution, which for our example ends up being 5. From there, we take the forecast value for the day we are looking at and plot it on this distribution. You could also overlay the forecast distribution as well to see any differences in the shapes of the PDF, but our example gets to be too cluttered if we do this. The last step is to perform the standardized anomaly calculation, which takes the forecast value of 85, subtracts the three-week running mean temperature of 75, which is 10, then divides that value by the standard deviation of the CFSR climatological PDF of 5, and that gives us a standardized anomaly of 2. This type of comparison is used in the Ensemble Situational Awareness Table, ESAT, to quickly compare the North American Ensemble Forecast System, or NAFES, which are the GEFS and Canadian ensembles combined to produce a 50-member ensemble over North America, and those are compared with the CFSR to see where the standardized anomaly is large, indicating the time and meteorological parameter that must be examined more closely. This example shows that for precipitable water, there is a plus 4 to plus 5 standardized anomaly located over the mid-Atlantic region indicating that PW values for the area in dark green are higher than the CFSR climatological mean for 1979 to 2009. It is recommended to take a deeper look into the NAFES data, remember, that's the GEFS and Canadian ensembles combined, to try and understand why PW is higher than climatology in this case. A potential pitfall is reading a standardized anomaly in the wrong context. This can give you a false impression about the data. Let's say you see a four standard deviation in moisture above or below what the climatological normal would be. That may not be very significant, depending on the time of year, like an atmospheric river event in the winter. A better product would be to look at return intervals to see how often an extreme anomaly event of a given magnitude occurs. Standardized anomalies in the ESAT table also faces a similar problem with products that use CFSR. The data set only runs from 1979 to 2009, so we're approaching 15 years of data that is not included in CFSR, 2009 to 2024. This could result in many significant weather events getting missed in the climatology. One final issue is that you are comparing the NAFE's ensemble mean to climatology instead of the entire ensemble output. You could miss lower probability outlier events, but higher impact situations that could be on the tails of the distribution. It would be better to look at a product like the Extreme Forecast Index and Shift of Tails to see if this kind of scenario is playing out.